Um, so you're in the busy time of the year, tax season has started. You've just processed a bunch of stimulus payments. So how are things going with the office and, and all of that? Well, I don't want to uh, claim too much credit, but uh, government nationally, statewide, even municipal is not very well regarded by people these days because, well, the pandemic has been such a tremendous uh, destructive uh, system. Uh, you know, we just for a year, we've lived under these very weird conditions and people are very confused and frustrated and frankly angry with government. So anytime government can look good and do what it says it's going to do, I think we need to point attention to that. that we, within three days, put out 422,000 relief checks, uh, half of them directly into people's bank accounts, half of it sent in the mail by the U.S. Post Office. And we did that simultaneously with the start of the regular tax season, which started on Friday, for February 12th. And we're processed uh, three quarters of a million tax returns simultaneous with all the relief checks going out and knock on wood, everything worked very, uh, very smoothly and quickly and speedily and competently. And um, I hold that up, number one, because our 1,100 employees tested and retested and retested again and retested again. I mean, it re really was a process that was uh, thought through uh, very carefully and implemented with a lot of, uh, of uh, advanced planning. Um, and I think it proves to, you know, in a small way, kind of a little tiny way, it says to folks, you know, you're democratically elected government, not your Democrats, not partisan, but your system works. And uh, so we are advertising that quite a bit because uh, 422,000 checks asking us to do that at almost the exact same moment the tax season starts where we're processing hundreds of thousands of tax returns. Uh, and all of that has happened seamlessly. So I, I throw that up, not to claim credit myself, but if it had frozen and uh, not worked right, I would be the one being bludgeoned right now. So sure. I might as well take a little bit of the credit and, uh, you know, salute the fact that uh, unlike the employment checks, which have been a debacle for the labor secretary to deal with, it's just, you know, partly because of their uh, inadequate infrastructure, but also they got overwhelmed. And then the vaccine rollout has just been a real problem for Marylanders. I mean, everybody is like just frustrated, confused and angry. That's a life-saving uh, process. It's not obviously uh, completely the fault of anybody in Maryland uh, because it's, uh, you know, it's related to the supply of vaccines, obviously. But the process has been so ad hoc and flawed uh, from a uh, citizen perspective that it's corrosive as far as when those things those things add up. People finally say, "What do we need this?" government for? Why don't we switch? Because they're so mad. And, you know, so anyway, I feel like we're, in addition to getting relief checks out, getting refunds back to people, we give almost $3 billion in refunds during the time period that we're in right now uh, to 3 million Maryland families. We do that very speedily. We average two and a half business days. When people call us on the phone, we answer within 60 seconds with, a, with a, a friendly voice that can help out. And to the extent the rest of government could emulate that and be held to that standard, I think that would be a good thing. Uh, so how, yeah, we're busy. Sure, sure. <laughs> how do you, um, how would you see a, a better way of rolling out the vaccine? What could have been done differently with the vaccine rollout? I know some of the problems well, cool. is the, you know, the number of vaccines from the feds, but. Yeah, no, that's not my, uh, once again, I, I, I indicated that issue, but uh, I think the uh, contrast between Biden and Trump is just, stu is just stunningly accurate. I mean, for, ele for 11 months, we had President Trump who had no national strategy other than just denying that the, vac denying that the pandemic was really there. <laughs> and as a result, we had this confused, highly politicized, 
uh, response to the pandemic in which uh, 500,000 people, unfortunately, have passed away. And they've passed away isolated from their family. They can't, you know, the idea of dying peacefully uh, in this COVID pandemic has just been completely lost. So you add in all the grief, all the grief and guilt of the survivors, and we, you just have a tremendous botched effort. And Biden, I think, in a month has corrected a lot of that and tried to say, uh, you know, here's the strategy and uh, treat this virus seriously. So I think things are changing. Uh, the vaccines, uh, you have to give Trump a certain amount of credit for the uh, fact that he uh, moved the vaccines along. But uh, once again, there was no real uh, preparation for, well, when we start getting vaccines, what are we going to do with them? <laughs> Speaking, going back to taxes, um, how I, I saw um, you were asking people who had unemployment um, income to hold off on filing their taxes, sort of to get the system in place, I, I guess, related to the relief bill. Um, what's the status well, on that? And yeah, no, that's because the, you know, we're, when I say we're simultaneously starting the regular tax season, we are. It's like hand in glove. It's an incredible coincidence of timing. Uh, but the uh, change in uh, taxation of state unemployment payments, in contrast to the feds that, who are going to collect taxes on the federal share of unemployment, and we're not at the state level, we have to redo the forms and it's gonna take a couple of weeks. And we urge people that can wait, you might, that might be more efficient to wait and file and save the state taxes on, the, uh, on your unemployment if you have that and uh, avoid the need to uh, file an amended return. Sure. Uh, because the form, we can't, do the forms as quickly as we can do the uh, the dispersals. So it's mm -hmm. and and then we also have to allow the private sector uh, tax preparers to change their software. So that was the reason for that uh, suggestion, but it's only a suggestion. Yeah. Um, do you do we have a sense, or do you have a sense um, from the taxes that have been filed so far, or sort of how? Mailenders um, did in 2020 compared to 2019? Yes, we have a pretty clear picture of the state's economy. A third of the folks that are low wage earners are in a deep recession, very similar to the 1930s. They have no money, they have no job, they have no income that they can use for buying food for their kids or medicine or paying rent. And it is when I say 1930s, I mean 1930s and food lines. The other two thirds of us are living in a kind of a weird situation where we're stir crazy, but we are uh, in homes that are relatively comfortable and protective against the COVID crisis. We're uh, working remotely and we're getting paid. And uh, other than it being an incredibly weird experience, uh, we are more or less okay, certainly okay financially. And so we have two Maryland's. We have a third of the Maryland of the state that's in a deep recession, two thirds of it, which is in this kind of limbo where frankly, uh, we're getting paid, but we don't have any, any things we can really spend our money on. We can't travel to see our kids. We can't uh, go out and do a lot of entertaining in restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's just one of those situations. The uh, tax revenues, uh, because of the federal stimulus that pumped uh, literally $24, $25 billion into the state last uh, summer, particularly through the Paycheck Protection Program, which sent money directly to private companies so that they could use it to pay uh, or subsidize their employees. That has proved to be enormously beneficial to the tax revenues of the state because those companies withhold uh, state income tax and send it to us from the Paycheck Pro uh, Protection Program. So instead of dipping uh, strongly, uh, suddenly, which is what we thought when a million Marylanders filed for 
first time unemployment last March and April. Instead of a big drop in tax revenues, we've stayed more or less, not completely, we've lost 700 million, I think, but it's, it's within the parameters of some normalcy uh, as far as the level of tax revenues. And it's in, like a lot of states, we, real, we uh, did not realize until after the fact uh, that in fact, the revenues were gonna be more or less stable uh, because of the federal stimulus. And I, that's why I think we need one more federal stimulus um, because uh, it proved to be such a, uh, well, without it, we would be up the creek economically right now in the state of Maryland. And the, uh, the severe recession that the one third of us at the bottom of the, bar bottom of the economic ladder are experiencing right now, we do not want that to spread into the two thirds that you and I, John and others are, you know, we're, we're involved in, but it's not like we're standing outside begging for a box of free food. Sure. Do you, um, speaking of a new, a new so stimulus. Generally, it's a, I have generally an optimistic view of things. Sure. I think by the end of this year, November, December, we're gonna have something akin to the roaring twenties where people really bring a lot of that money that's been backed up in their accounts and spend it. Uh, obviously, uh, I, I'm basing that on the, dis, uh, the distribution of the vaccines. And yeah. all I'm suggesting is it seems we seem to have a cohesive national plan in place. It's something we can complain about from time to time, but it's not like what we had for the year of the last administration where you know, it was like uh, somebody just telling most of us to uh, not believe what we were seeing on TV and not believe what we were reading in the paper and basically think the whole thing was a hoax. It isn't. <laughs> it's very, unfortunately, it's a very real threat. And it still hasn't been brought under control. And the variants are out there, which kind of, you know, every time I open the paper and read it, I I, uh, you know, I'm, sometimes I get a little concerned because uh, no control of the virus, no economic recovery. Certainly. Do you um, have a preference as far as a second stimulus, the 1400 to 2000, or do you think any amount is gonna be beneficial? Well, we've advocated for a long time. And I continue to advocate that the richest state and the richest country in the history of the world, which is what Maryland is, should make a $2,000 payment to every low wage earning family with small children. And we know who they are. We have, we've given the list and we've advertised it. I think it's 463,000 families. These are not single adults who perhaps deserve some help too, but we were focused on the on the low wage earning families that have small children. And, you know, I still, I still think we should send, we have the money to send them a $2,000 check. It would cost $924 million. And uh, that's, we have that money. It's on a one-time basis. It's uh, fiscally doable. It's economically beneficial because that money is spent very quickly. And it's morally the right thing to do. Sending them a $300 check or a $500 check like we did is almost insulting because they have thousands of dollars in debt that they've accrued. They haven't been able to pay their rents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm talking about the folks that make 20,000 or 30,000. These, the, these are the lower part of the, low wage earning uh, uh, sectors. Uh, the more skilled uh, low wage earners have in fact actually made more money during this period because their employers really wanna keep the folks that are most experienced. They don't wanna lose that, but it's, it's the you know, last in first out for a lot of these low wage uh, earners and uh, Boy, for us to turn our back on them and say, lump it, that, that's a pretty tough message. On, it's unfortunate. So I hope that there is a second or third or third federal stimulus uh, that President Biden gets through 
Congress, and I hope that the state will revisit uh, once again. Uh, these are one-off things. This is not some kind of permanent subsidy of low wage earners. It simply is, let's get, make sure they have enough uh, cash to survive until we get to uh, the roaring 20s, as I call it, at the end of this calendar year where they will all have jobs, they will all be back, everyone will be vaccinated, and uh, we'll, we'll be uh, thankful, I think, that the economy begins to really recover. I, I just this morning had a meeting with the Talbot Chamber, Talbot Chamber of Commerce, that was an excellent meeting, and then I had a meeting with the uh, on broadband uh, with the Eastern Utilities, which is, as you know, a extension of, uh, it's not a uh, not-for-profit, it's not a for-profit, it's a uh, some tax entity in between with, uh, but it's basically a, a community-based uh, utility company with 13, 14,000 customers. And they have uh, very expertly adopted a broadband internet project, which is going to correct the absence of uh, high-speed internet for many folks in Talbot County. And to their credit, they've uh, gotten large grants from the U United States Department of Agriculture. And uh, they did it with the support of uh, Andy Harris, the Republican congressman who united with Democratic Senators Cardin and Van Hollen to get the uh, USDA to uh, come up with a $13.1 million grant, which is, you know, that's very impressive. And uh, it's a feather in uh, Talbot County's hat, I think, as a uh, you know, in a jurisdiction that is uh, actually not just uh, complaining about the lack of internet, but is actually doing something about it. Yeah. I was going to add that certainly with the with the pandemic and so many people working from home, we've seen even more so the need for high speed internet. You know, everywhere we can get it. Absolutely. And it's not just a rural issue, which it normally is, you know, rural broadband. It's inner city. Uh, you know, people driving around trying to find a parking lot where they can get Wi-Fi coverage so their kids can spend an hour remotely learning. Sure. Yeah. You can put your <laughs> finger on it. It's, it's a big problem. But uh, they, they, to their credit, seem to have uh, cracked the code on you know, Talbot County's problem, and they're moving to, to leave it. The question is whether what they're doing is can be scaled up so the whole state benefits from it. Certainly. Well, Comptroller, okay. thank you for your time. It was a pleasure to speak with you again. John, great talking to you, and uh, best to your readers. Thank you.